Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I have a video featuring the brand new Gerda Center Designs How Are You stamp set. This is part of a blog hop to celebrate the new release and she'll be giving away three of the stamp sets. So if you head on over to my blog and the link in the video description below, you can um, comment on my blog and the other designers blogs so that you can have a chance to win. So here you see the set and it's um, obviously has a very clear sheep theme and there's a lot of great sayings like how are you, love you, miss you, you are awesome, thank you, and most of them are spelt, you can combine it with the E-W-E-U, like the sheep, but um, there's also a Y-O-U in case you didn't want a putting sentiment or if you wanted to use it with the rabbit. I thought that was a nice touch so that it's a little bit more versatile. There's also some little accessories like the um, yarn ball there which I think will help tie it in if you're making a card for somebody in your life who likes to knit. The sheeps would be um, an excellent thing. So for my card today I wanted to start by creating a starry background. There's a little gathering of stars. Some of the past sets from Gerda have featured um, little gathering of hearts, but I thought it'd be fun to have a little gathering of stars and um, I, I had this idea when I first saw this stamp set of the little bunny who's laying on his back in the stamp set gazing up at the stars. So that's what I'm creating, his starry background right now. So I took a stitched rectangle square from My Favorite Things. I put some um, anti-static powder on it. And then I'm stamping that pattern of stars all over the paper, making sure to stamp off and to stamp randomly. Then I'm covering it with clear um, embossing powder. I'm using the Versamark ink so that everything will remain clear and see-through, but it will actually in the end look white because you're going to see the white through the clear. So it's going to create an emboss resist. I've done this many times before. It's one of my favorite techniques. And um, I had recently done a card with Lawn Fawn where I um, created an emboss resist star background but then I wound up covering it up with a lot of vellum and so this time I decided to create a similar bold background but I'm going to um, not cover it up as much. For the sky today I went with Picked Raspberry, Dusty Concord, and Chipped Sapphire. I know the pink isn't super traditional but like I said with the um, recent Lawn Fawn card it does, you can kind of see some pinks and reds during the sunset, and I just thought that it would be a fun color combination. When I blend with these colors, I do leave my little um, round foam pads on the bottom of the ink pads with a little bit of Velcro, so that way this can be a really simple process. And as you see, I have um, several tools, so that way I can use three and four colors at one time. I don't, I think it's worth um, investing in a couple extra tools, so that way you don't have to keep switching between and changing the foams out while you're working. So I'm going to let that background dry, and I've set it to the side, and now I'm going to do some stamping. I am stamping the little bunny with some archival ink from Ranger. I thought about coloring it with Copics because I have them and it would be simple, but I know not everyone who watches has Copics and I know that there's always it's always good to find a different way to use your supplies. And so I decided that I would do some distress ink coloring for this particular image. And so I have the brand new Hickory Smoke Distress Ink. I was really excited about this ink. It might not seem like the most exciting color because it's gray, but there was no distress ink in that cool gray or even any kind of true gray. There was pumice stone, which is a really green brown gray, but this is a much more um, clear gray. Uh, it's a cool gray, and um, I love to see some more grays added to the distress line for different um, coloring techniques. Like I could see you using this to blend out a sidewalk in a picture. And so what I'm doing is just blending it generally on the bottom of the bunny to give it a little bit more of a shadow at the bottom and then blending it out so that it will have a little bit of shading where it's dark on the bottom and lighter on the top because the sh um, stars will be shining into him to get a little bit more light on the top is my thought process there. So I fussy cut out the bunny, which wasn't too difficult to do, and I traced it with a black marker from Memento. And then I also die cut some hearts. These are stitched hearts from Lawn Fawn, and they match that stitched panel, the stitched square panel from MFT there. And my idea 
is to have the bunny floating on one of the clouds and then just have a little smattering of clouds around him. Originally, I had thought to maybe put the bunny laying in some grass looking up at the clouds, but once I started using the um, more fantastical colors, like, you know, the pink, like I said, is not quite a realistic color, I said, you know what, let's just make it kind of a fantasy thing. And so now I have my bunny floating up in the clouds. And um, I'm going to layer the clouds around. I want to make sure that I keep it balanced so the bunny's kind of heavy there in the bottom left-hand corner. So I'm going to make um, there to be two clouds in the top right here, again, just to kind of balance that out a little bit. And then I was debating about how I wanted my sentiment. I thought maybe I would just place this on top of a white card base and leave a lot of white space and then just place the sentiment. Um, right beneath this panel but then I decided that the sentiments in the set are a little bit small and I thought that I could probably get it on one of these clouds so I just tried to experiment with trying to place it on the larger cloud and so that love you is just about the size of the card and I try to carefully place it so that it's not over any of the stitching or anything like that and I was able to get it right in there so then I'm just going to glue that cloud onto the background I use my VersaFine ink for this because I felt like it's giving a better impression right now. I think my archival was a little bit low and I'm going to refill it to see if that brings out the um, darker color again. So now I want to work on a background. Like I said before, I thought about placing it on a white background and then I decided that I wanted to do something a little bit fun to reincorporate those stars into the background. So. I'm going to once again use VersaFine ink to stamp the stars all over this black piece and I'm going to again clear emboss them. It will create a very similar look to the first time but it will be black on black instead of white on white and I won't be doing any emboss uh, sorry any um, inking over it. Instead it will just be this really subtle background so that there's some interest but um, it's not even super noticeable when you first look at it, but then as you kind of have the card in your hand for a minute, you start noticing that little bit of shine in the background, that little bit of interest and texture there. I really like the way that clear embossing looks on black. Now, you could also stamp it in the VersaFine Onyx Black ink, which you see me do many times, and then um, put clear embossing powder over it, and it would achieve a pretty similar effect. Um, but for this instance, I just went with the Versamark because I'd already been using it. And um, I'm going to melt that. I definitely recommend letting your heat gun heat up for a little bit before you start to um, melt the embossing powder so that you just get a more smooth melting and it doesn't curl as much. And then also to heat both sides. That's, the for me, the easiest way I find to combat the curling. Then I'm just placing this whole panel on a piece of really thin craft foam. Instead of using foam tape, I'm just using a large piece of foam behind it and placing it onto my card. And that's going to be it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafty videos, you can subscribe to my channel. I'm going to leave you links to the blog hop so that you can see some more inspiration with this stamp set and enter for your chance to win. And I'll also leave links to the videos in the um, the list like leave links to the products in the video description below thanks for watching bye